Hey guys, Bryson with Trick Tools here, and today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about planishing hammers. So, uh, what is a planishing hammer? How does it work? And, you know, what, what is the purpose of a planishing hammer for sheet metal shaping as opposed to maybe some other types of uh, tools? So, um, for starters, um, there are many, many different types of planishing hammers, um, whether it be based on size, uh, the type of motor setup it has, um, you know, that sort of thing. Um, everybody's kind of has their own different versions. Uh, you know, you can, if you look up on the internet, just search planishing hammers. I mean, there's a bunch of different options that pop up. Um, and I'm going to talk to you guys from my experience on what makes a good planishing hammer as opposed to, uh, you know, something that maybe is just something that's going to get you by. So, um, for starters, uh, this machine here is the ProLine uh, cast. 36 inch planishing hammer. So this machine right here is kind of the, um, I'm gonna say it's the, it's kind of the, the Cadillac of uh, planishing hammers. It's gonna give you different features, um, you know, as far as uh, machine capabilities that other machines don't give you. Um, obviously this has a 36 inch throat, so you can work on big panels, that sort of thing. Um, so to talk to you guys first though about uh, you know, what a planishing hammer does and how it works. Um, so uh, essentially this machine here is run on shop air. So uh, you've got the regulator on it. It's all set up with air lines. So the motor here in the front uh, is just an air motor. And essentially what it's doing is as you push down on the pedal, it brings the whole motor head down into the casting and it's going to line up some air ports uh, that are machined into it and it's going to allow airflow into the air motor which then in turn moves a piston that is inside of the motor uh, it's going to move that up and down and that's the part that's actually doing the hammering so you won't actually see when you're running a, the planish hammer you won't see you're not going to see this whole thing just bouncing up and down to do the hammering. It's basically the top and bottom dies are going to be together and you'll be able to slide your piece and you know move it around through there as the piston inside of the air motor is actually doing the hammering uh, from inside. So how that separates a planishing hammer from let's say a power hammer is that you know a power hammer uh, you know if you think of like a mini max style machine a pull max style machine those machines actually have a hammering stroke. So those machines, when you turn them on, the, the dies are actually doing this motion to hammer and do the work on whatever part you're working on in those tools. So this machine, like I said, is different. These dies are always in contact and they're not actually doing this. They're just together and that weight on the inside is just doing the hammering from inside. So that in turn makes a planishing hammer better for um, smoothing metal, fine-tuned shaping. Um, it's really going to be able to allow you to work apart to a finished product uh, to where it's nice and smooth the way you want it and be able to use that on your project that you're working on. So um, again, as opposed to a power hammer, a planishing hammer is going to give you that, um, you know, that ability to really smooth and finish out a panel in that way. Now you can do that type of work on types of power hammers as well, uh, but there's just a lot of different um, tooling and aspects that go into that as far as power hammers are concerned. So, um, you know, for instance, on a, you know, on a power hammer, you can take a flat piece of sheet metal and if you have the right tooling for it say you've got a big yoder style power hammer or something like that a pettingale um, you know if you've got the right tooling the right dies the right radiuses on your dies you can take a totally flat sheet of metal and turn it into something that's got a lot of really nice smooth crown on it um, but you know when you're running through something with a Polmax style machine these machines were originally developed for um, running shapes uh, beads, profiles, shearing. Uh, you can actually set up uh, in a in a Polmax machine. Uh, they have shearing dies that you can set up that you can actually 
cut metal with, you can do louvering, a lot of different things you can do with that um, as far as more of a, a pull max style power hammer is concerned. So, you know, with a planching hammer though, uh, you can do a lot of the similar types of uh, panel shaping that you would do say on an English wheel. Um, so the difference between that would be um, on a planching hammer you are you have the control aspect of being able to hammer in a single spot so when you push on the pedal you can move your part around just a little bit like just a little bit to hammer in one little spot if that's what you want to do whereas an English wheel because you're using the rolling action of the wheels back and forth you have to actually track over an area and it's a lot harder to get into fine tune really small spots so uh, my personal opinion would be that English wheels are great for a um, little bit bigger parts you know I, I wouldn't always want to go up to an English wheel with a part this size and try to do all my smoothing and shaping with it is it possible yes is it the most effective and easiest I would say no and that's where a planishing hammer uh, could come in handy in that realm because you can really uh, dial in small areas and you have the control aspect of not having to be moving the part back and forth like you do in an English wheel um, aggressively to achieve uh, the end result so um, now there's like I said there's different types of planishing hammers so we have over here we have the mech hammer and this essentially is a planishing hammer um, it runs using an air motor, but it's an electrically driven air motor. So instead of being plugged into shop air, this machine creates its own air. So you have a electric motor up here that has a clutch. So the more you push on the foot pedal, the more the clutch engages, the faster it spins the motor and, you know, does the hammering work from there. So there are different weights uh, for the inside of the mech hammer. So you have the standard weight and then there's a heavy weight and a lightweight and an extra lightweight. So those can be changed out to achieve different hammering pressures, you know, based on what you're working with. And then as far as the tooling for this machine, uh, this was all developed by a guy named Ben over in the Netherlands. So he obviously developed this machine in his shop and for any uses he needed, he developed his own tooling. So uh, he put together a really nice selection of different tooling to be able to achieve different types of jobs in this hammer and because of the way this hammer works um, you're not actually applying the pressure to the die uh, with your foot as opposed to how the proline works so there is a spring right here that that is what is keeping the down pressure on the dies so this spring uh, keeps that pressure on there and so that gap is always set so when you do run your panel in here Swing this arm out of the way. When you do run your panel in here, you pretty much just set your panel in and the pressure is already set. So as you push on the foot pedal and it engages the motor, um, it's going to then in turn do the hammering based on how hard you're pushing on the pedal. Uh, you know, think of it like a gas pedal. The harder you push, the faster it goes, the, you know, faster and harder the hammering uh, is working. So, um, Essentially what would set maybe these two machines apart is because this one uses spring pressure as opposed to your foot pressure to keep the dies together, um, you can load this in different ways, which allows you to run uh, different tooling such as beading tooling to be able to run a bead. There's a little bit of thumbnail shrinking uh, action that you can do in this machine. So it's gonna give you few of the capabilities that might be possible, uh, let's say with a mini max or pull max style uh, hammer, and that's just based on the way the machine is set up. So um, both of these machines hit around uh, 3,000 hits a minute uh, at full speed. Um, now on the Proline style hammer, this machine is uh, adjusted using an air uh, control valve on the side where you can turn it to adjust the pressure you know, up and down which in turn is gonna speed up or slow down the hammer. So um, if you want lighter pressure, you still need to have the dies in contact, but you can turn the air pressure down, which will then slow the air motor down and allow you to get a little bit different pressure. So some of that's gonna be based on, you know, the material you hammer with, whether it's thin aluminum or thicker steel. Um, 
I would say the one advantage from a ProLine cast hammer that you get uh, that I would say you pretty much don't get with most other hammers on the market is strength. So you have the hardened tooling and because of these cast arms, this machine has a ton of strength. So in my professional career, I've even planished uh, up to like 090 uh, steel on it to you know, create parts or, you know, end corners and stuff for bumpers, um, for a hot rod, that sort of thing. So because this machine here is so strong, um, it's going to give you the capabilities of actually being able to do a little bit thicker material um, as opposed to maybe a, a machine that has a frame that's just a tubular frame. And traditionally, the more the harder you're trying to hammer, the more flex you get in a, tu a tubular style frame. Um, so material capacities could change, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to fire up this machine a little bit to show you, you know, how planishing works uh, on this machine. Then we'll work over here on the mech hammer and kind of explain some of the differences there. So um, I'm going to open this valve here just a little bit. And so there's a pretty large, you know, that's something I would consider, um, you know, when you're looking at planishing hammers is, is this hammer going to have the tooling I need to achieve what I'm trying to achieve? Um, and so what I mean by that is um, when you're planishing, in order to, there, you can planish for two different reasons. You can planish to, um, you know, if you've got a part like this that has a pretty rough shape, I beat this panel on the, be uh, on the shot bag just to create, you know, some real rough shape. But, um, if I wanted to continue to work this rough shape um, and keep as much uh, curve in the part as possible, you know, you can go to a pretty aggressive radius uh, die to be able to keep that going. But if mainly you're looking to smooth this out as is, you want to be able to choose a die that has as close to the radius that you're trying to achieve already in the lower die. So. You want to make sure you pick a hammer that has tooling that's going to be able to um, go throughout the range of shapes that you're going to want to make. So there are some hammers out there that have very few little uh, lower die options um, and that's going to limit what your hammer is capable of. So you want to make sure you pick a machine that's got tooling that's going to uh, give you what you need. So. Um, like I said, we're going to go ahead and fire this up. I'm going to put a, eh, we'll start with a, we're going to start with a five inch radius lower die in here and uh, we'll show you guys how this works. All right, so when I'm going to start planishing here, like I said, you have to put the pressure down on this pedal on this machine to be able to, you know, get the motor lined up uh, with the air and all that stuff to get it working. So you can see it obviously, you know, that it starts the motor going up and down, but on this hammer, you don't want this thing, you don't want the motor bounce up and down. So you want to be able to put the dies together, uh, put that pressure on your part and get right to hammering. So I've got the air valve turned down a little bit here, so I'll show you the difference between light hammering and heavier hammering. So you can see right away um, that it's obviously smoothing the panel out. And uh, so this machine has a constant oil flow uh, of air tool oil that's going to go be traveling through the lines to keep the motor lubricated. And uh, obviously that has to come out at some point. So you see a little bit of oil uh, spatter on the part, which actually I don't think is a bad thing because it actually helps run the part through there a little smoother. So um, you can see just with that little bit of hammering, this whole area in the center is a lot more smooth than it was when I started. Um, 
Now this is obviously, again, like I said, taking a part that already had some really rough shape and trying to just smooth it out. Um, you know, but if I wanted to, I could replace this lower die with something a lot more aggressive to create a lot more dome in this same area. And it would, you'll actually start to see a line around it if I do this to, that will actually kind of creating more of a blister in a part. So that's the cool thing about a planishing hammer is that if you're taking an existing part that maybe you have that's pretty flat and you want to add a little blister shape into it, maybe you've got some clearance that you need to create, you know, that sort of thing, uh, you can do that uh, using a more aggressive die to start to get your shape in there and then smooth it out a little bit. So we'll keep hammering here. So you can see, obviously, with a uh, really uh, a, a way tighter radius on the lower die, um, it's putting some aggressive shape in this part. So it's really creating a lot more of a blister here, and and even it's not as smooth uh, because each time this is hitting, it's a smaller contact area. So it's not as smooth of a part. Now, if I wanted to go and try to smooth that area out, then I just find a lower die that closely matches uh, that little blister that we just put in there. So um, I'm going to go with, this is a two inch radius lower die. What I was just using to create that shape was a 0.78 of an inch uh, radius on the lower die. So um, we're going to hammer this real quick and try to smooth this up. I'm going to turn the air down just a little bit. All right, so as you can see, you know, that's a pretty small area to be working that's created this blister. And that's what I mean by um, on a planishing hammer, you can really work in tight spots like this, um, you know, to be able to create little shapes uh, in this way. And that's not possible really, um, or not nearly as easily on like an English wheel uh, or that sort of thing. So now to show you guys the other aspect of it, um, I'm gonna, set this down and I'm going to jump over here to this uh, flat piece. So, um, you know, the beauty of a good planishing hammer is the ability to, like I said, go from shaping a piece like that, uh, smoothing to then shaping, uh, you know, a, a little section to um, taking something that maybe you just need a little bit of low crown in and being able to select the right dies for it to be able to create that low crown in your part. So I'm gonna set this here. And what I'm gonna do is switch out to a, we're gonna go with a 24 inch radius. And this is a bigger lower die. And that's what I really like about these ProLine machines is the, the, the die size. Um, so this is all kind of uh, based around the CP planishing hammer style tooling, uh, that sort of thing. So um, Clay Cook, when he designed uh, this stuff to kind of be an updated machine. Uh, I really feel like he uh, did a good job with the tooling selection. And I really love these uh, larger, 
lower dies for this because it really, especially when you're trying to, let's say, work on a door skin panel, that sort of thing, these lower radius, uh, larger dies really uh, do a great job of, of handling a bigger uh, part and helping the stability of the machine. And along with that, I'm gonna switch out the upper. So this was our standard upper die and pop that out of there. There's a little retaining clip in here that holds it in. So I'm gonna pop that one out. And then we have a large radius upper die that also, again, like, like I said with the lower, you know, when you're doing something that has a real low crown to it, door skin, roof skin, other parts like that, um, the bigger the die, the more stable the part is in the machine, uh, in my opinion. And that's what uh, I really like about this hammer for doing uh, those kind of parts. So uh, swap these out. Um, hammering on the top there gets the upper die past the clip, the retaining clip that's in the motor, so it stays in place there. Uh, and another reason on these machines that you want uh, to always keep the dies while you're hammering, you want to keep the dies in contact with each other and not bouncing around, uh, you know, is because of that retaining clip in there partially because if the die, if you don't have enough pressure and this die starts slapping around in here, uh, it will actually break that retaining clip and you have to replace it. So, um, not a big deal, but it can happen. So, okay. On this part, like I said, for smoothing, um, these, you know, the different real low crown uh, radius lower dies do a fantastic job of being able to create a nice um, smooth radius on a panel to get it shaped up, uh, you know, for a door skin or something like that. So. So obviously what I did right there, you might be saying, well, that doesn't really look like it did a whole lot. And that's the point. Um, you know, when you're planishing, uh, I guess in theory, the, the definition of planishing is to uh, smooth out something, smooth out a part using light hammering. So the hammering action that's really going on here, um, you know, yeah, the hammer, the weight inside the hammer is doing the work, um, but the, the hammering is, relatively light in comparison to say taking a hammer and actually hitting this one time with your hand and because it's obviously doing it in a rapid pace your hammering marks are so close together as you're moving across the panel that it keeps the finish nice and smooth so um, the tracking on this you know you can see the lines back and forth where i tracked on that but there's not a whole lot of shape difference in this and that's why with metal shaping same thing with an English wheel, uh, patience is key. Um, you know, if you're trying to create a low crown like this, it's so um, easy to want to make it happen so fast that you go too far too fast and then you've kind of either have to try to uh, take a little bit of crown out of it or maybe you've gone too far and have to start over. So patience is going to be key on, you know, parts uh, in a planishing hammer. Even though it can do stuff really fast, you want to make sure you choose the right tooling that's going to help you create the part that you're trying to create. So, um, yeah, so to, that kind of shows you the difference between how quickly you can blister a panel and in the same amount of time using the same hammer, you can create not really hardly any shape at all. So it all depends on the tooling you have in it and the technique of what you're using to work on your part. So, this last part here, I'm going to jump over to the mech hammer and show you guys um, on a mech hammer the 
Um, we're going to do some linear stretching, and I'm going to explain what that is here. So first off, I'm going to swing this lower arm out of the way, and I'm going to replace this lower die here with a linear stretching die. So what a linear stretching die is, as opposed to a regular planishing die, this is a standard planishing die that has a perfect radius all the way around. So this one here is a three quarter inch radius lower die. Um, and that's what you would use to create a compound curve in all directions. Now linear stretch, this has a radius cut only in one direction this way. So it's totally flat in this direction across the top of the die, but it's curved this way. Now on the mech hammer, we have two different types of linear stretch dies. There's a one here that has a little more um, broad radius on it, and this one's a little more sharp. So um, it's gonna do two different types of um, stretching because this one, the contact area is gonna be a little wider. This one's gonna be a little tighter. So it's gonna do the work in a different way. So I'll show you guys both of these. And uh, we're gonna start off with the lower crown uh, linear stretch first. Um, and uh, explain to you guys, you know, maybe what the use of a die like that might be. So with this machine, like I said before, the harder you push on the pedal, uh, the faster the um, motor spins. So you can go pretty slow or you can speed it up and that's all dependent on your foot pressure. So linear stretching, uh, you can use it on a flat panel. You can use it on the edge of a flat panel, that sort of thing, to, if you're creating reverse curve, that sort of thing. Or even just like you would use a shrinker stretcher machine, you can do stretching on a flange and actually create curve uh, in a part like this that has a 90 degree bend in it. So um, I'm gonna start off right here. We're gonna slide this in here and we're gonna work this back and forth and you'll actually see this part start to have curve in it. So there you go. You see how quickly that put a curve in there. Now, you know, you might ask, well, why do you want to do this as opposed to a shrinker stretcher? Um, really, this is going to have a nice smooth finish on it, uh, on a stretch like this, where as opposed to a shrinker stretcher, it has teeth marks that has to grab the metal uh, and, you know, stretch it apart. So this is going to be a little more consistent. You have a nice smooth finish on it. Uh, and it's just a different type of stretching in this way. So to explain, uh, you know, maybe what that linear stretching die was doing as it's hitting. So in, instead of on a regular round planishing die where your contact area is just essentially just a little dot. Um, and that's obviously that dot gets progressively bigger, the flatter the radius uh, you go to. And on a linear stretch die, instead of it being a round dot type shape, it's actually gonna be a, a line uh, in, in its shape. So the contact area, because it's flat on a linear stretch die this way, the contact area is as wide as the die in this direction, but it's only as wide as the area that would actually be touching the metal, uh, you know, in the, in the other direction. So your contact area, when you look at this, you can actually kind of see little tiny ridges and lines uh, in here. Uh, and that's based on that lower die making contact uh, in, you know, every time that hammer hits down through here. So uh, that's the difference. And that's why when you look at this across this direction, it's relatively flat uh, here and it's not curved uh, in this direction. So um, I'll swap out here real quick. We'll go to this second one. 
and I'm gonna grab this other flat panel that I was just working with. All right, so I've swapped, swapped out to the tighter radius linear stretch here real quick, just to show you guys this example. And what I'm gonna be doing is on this piece here, uh, I'm gonna stretch on the edge and it's gonna, what it's gonna do is it's gonna stretch this edge in this direction because it's hammering in that kind of line shape this way, which is mainly stretching the metal uh, you know, in that direction every time it hits. So every time it hits, it's creating a little more curve in this part. So uh, we'll hammer this real quick. Now you can see it obviously deformed the edge of this panel um, and because it stretched that edge out. But essentially, if you were to, you know, you can kind of hand tweak this a little bit if you were really trying to create a curve in the side of this thing. And I wouldn't, if I was really trying to create a curve across the whole edge of this panel, I would kind of work a little deeper into the panel as well to allow this to, um, you know, to all stretch up across here in this direction. So. You can see how linear stretch die, I mean, it's, it's only stretched it in this way across the edge um, without putting any compound curve in it in this direction. So, um, so I think the last thing uh, that I'll say on planishing hammers is that with the different types of planishing hammers that are out there, um, you know, my advice is going to be to pick a hammer that has um, really good tooling selections uh, to be able to achieve the different tasks that you're going to want to achieve with a hammer. So um, pick something that's got a pretty broad range of lower dies. Um, so the mech hammer here has all the way from, from flat all the way up to a 5 8 inch uh, radius um, and then a whole selection of other tooling to um, be able to achieve different things uh, in planishing. Now is the Proline stuff. Um, we have a really nice selection of lower radius dies, linear stretch, uh, some square dies, and some different upper dies as well to be able to uh, um, achieve the different planishing tasks that you want to achieve. So um, I prefer a hammer that has um, a, an incredibly strong frame um, because it, it, instead of having to make up for flex in a machine as you're planishing, the, the hammer and the planishing does exactly what it's doing at that moment without having to um, tweak your technique or what you're doing in order to make up for the uh, planishing uh, or the flex in the planishing hammer. So for more information on planishing hammers and trying to figure out which machine is right for you, you can check out our selection of planishing hammers on our website at tricktools.com. Give us a call, uh, talk to us. Uh, tell us what you're doing, what you're working on, um, you know, what you're trying to achieve, and we can help you find the right hammer for you. So um, hopefully this answers some of your questions on planishing hammers and why you might want to include one in your shop. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.